Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Of Watch Central. It is currently half past nine here in the morning on day two on the Saturday of BlizzCon. I will be going into the event a little bit later, but first I wanted to talk about a lot of stuff to do with Myra. Myra has had a pretty interesting reaction so far with the community for a numerous amount of reasons, but I think the main one is Blizzard are very good at not revealing stat numbers and not revealing um, those kind of like numerical details in videos. They've done this since day one. Uh, it's kind of frustrating, but it's just so that, you know, they don't go, oh, it does this amount of damage and then they nerf and change it on the PTR and it's kind of easier for them. But the issue with that is that people don't know how much healing she does compared to Mercy or Lucio, doesn't know how much damage she does compared to Winston um, and how high impact she feels. And a lot of the gameplay that you may have seen on sort of YouTube or Twitch or even like in this video, we could have some background gameplay, hopefully, There'll probably be a lot of six Myras versus six Myras, so it's really difficult to tell how that synergy works, who she's countered by, what she works well with. Just because everybody's playing the same hero, this is of course the BlizzCon problem. Um, but I do have some stats here. I've been talking to the devs there and playing around and playtesting a lot of the stuff. Um, but also got a couple of Reddit threads as well, which have been keeping logs of numbers. Some of them are wrong. I just want to state that as a fact. Some of these things that um, you see out on Reddit and stuff are just flat out wrong when it comes to times and stuff and what abilities can do. So I wanted to just get everything right. There will be a couple of things that I think I will get wrong in this video, but there's a lot of stuff to do with Myra. And I want to kind of stop the intro there because I don't want to waffle on too much, but I just wanted to sort of make you aware of what's going on. We'll start with uh, Primary Fire. She has a healing and damage. If you left click, you heal. If you right click, you do damage. Most of you noticed by now, left click feels very much like May's uh, primary fire when she freezes people. Right click feels a little bit like Symmetra's uh, thing, but it doesn't latch on as most people think it does. It does a little bit, but it's more like Zarya's uh, left click where you have to kind of track it a little bit more. And the range on it is pretty impressive. The damage on it is about sort of up to 45 damage, most people are saying. Nobody knows for sure, but it um, doesn't feel that strong but you have to use it. The reason why you have to use it is simple. Myra doesn't have any ammo. Instead, she has like a Diva's Defense Matrix meter, which runs out over time. It diminishes. It lasts for about 10 seconds of straight healing. But when it comes to recharging, it's it's gradual. It's very slow. It probably would be about 30 seconds to recharge from zero to 100 again. The reason is, is because you need to do a little bit of damage with your right click as it replenishes the healing a hell of a lot faster when you do it like that. And that's because Blizzard want you to find a balance between healing people, but also doing a little bit of damage and the more damage you do the more healing you can do and you essentially have more opportunities and she is a mechanically heavy hero to an extent that it's very much about game sense projectiles and skill shots with her other abilities which we'll go over in a second but she very much acts kind of like sombra in that way her healing on her left click is about 75 to 80 heals per second so it's about the same as anna's um, but it's a little bit more than mercy's it's fairly easy to track people you want to stay in close it heals multiple people if you're like you know, there's multiple people sort of stood like that and you're healing through them, you will heal both of them. There's no like, um, if you heal somebody first, they get more than the person behind them. And there's also apparently a little bit of uh, a heal over time as well that is gradual on some of the players as well. For about four seconds afterwards, this was something that I didn't even notice. So that's pretty low impact, but that's a, a rumor. I can't really confirm that part of it. But certainly when it comes to healing and stuff like that, that's how it works. There's no ammo clip on any of these. And I think that's pretty much everything. It doesn't go for barriers. It's not a projectile, so it can't be deflected. It can't be eaten by D.Va, that kind of thing as well. With a right click, it's also not like Winston's Lightning, where it can go through shields. It will just sort of hit the barrier and not doing anything. So Reinhardt isn't going to be screwed over as much as possible. We'll go over the Biotic Orbs, which again are very confusing abilities. You press E, you have the option to either heal, put out a healing orb, or to put out a damage orb. Now, the orbs are very temperamental. Um, if they don't latch onto anybody for healing, they bounce around a lot. And a lot of the time, if you want to throw out some healing on yourself, that's the only way that you can actually do it. Apparently as well, if you do damage with your right click, it heals you a little bit. But again, didn't feel it, didn't have, feel like it had a lot of impact. So I can't really say for sure. It's something that I didn't really notice when I was playing it. And I played it for quite a lot. So uh, it's hard to say for sure. Um, but going back to the orb, it moves very quickly and it could sort of bounce. If you bounce off the floor and it goes into the sky, that's all the use you're going to get out of it. But a good thing about it is when it latches onto people to do healing or damage, it can bounce around a lot and then it slows down pretty, like a lot slower than um, Hull or Symmetra's right click. So um, it's pretty good in using and certainly good at using in closed spaces for both damage and sort of DPS. Now it acts as like a sort of healing pool that has 300 health and 
you know, if you've got the other five people that are really low on health and you throw it down, it will heal for 300 and dissipate, so it probably instantly disappear because it will heal that up. It is more burst healing than Lucio's amp it up, so it's very strong for those clutch situations. And certainly throwing a Anna Myra together with a, a biotic grenade and then a biotic orb, that's a lot of burst healing, so maybe we'll see triple tank again. I don't think that, but there's a lot of burst healing potential there as well. But it goes up to 300 health once it does that it dissipates there's a nerve myth as well that the smaller the ob gets so you know it does 300 health 200 health 100 health the smaller it gets the more it tends to bounce around and move faster again that was something that we couldn't really sort of see or try out or we were focusing on different aspects of the game at that point so um another rumor can't really confirm it but that seems quite likely to be the thing that happened the obs do go through shields much like hull and symmetra's right click they can be deflected they can be defense matrix because they have projectiles the cooldown is about 10 seconds and it's essentially an aoe now let's go into fade which is her shift a good ability really good ability it feels amazing to use it's on a six second cooldown so you can use it quite a lot meaning that you are one of the most mobile heroes in the game certainly more when it comes to support category as well meaning that you're very good on a dive team but with all of the stuff that we've gone over with her orbs and stuff like that, she's also very good against death volley teams. Now, I've always used the sort of idea of there's a spectrum between sort of compositions in Overwatch. You have the death ball teams, which are like the, the Roadhog, the Reinhardt, the Lucio. Everybody grouped up together in one big death ball, and they will just punch their way onto the point. And then you have Dive, which is much more like mobile, much more independent with a lot of heroes like Tracy and Genji on your team. Myra is right there between the spectrum between she works with this, but she also works with that. And she's also very good against both of them as well, meaning that she's pretty good in a lot of situations and when it comes to uh, viability and stuff I think there is going to be a niche that she fits into nicely but she doesn't have an impact either side so I don't think we're going to see an awful lot of her like certainly in the sort of pro scene certainly not to begin with however I do think that she's not going to be completely trashed here so uh, that's my opinion on that. I want to do a sort of a two-part series where I answer some of your questions in another video, but I don't want this one to end up for too long. I just want to go over the stats and stuff and things that we found out and how it's useful. It makes you very fast, much like Sombra Stealth. It makes you invulnerable as well, so you can't be CC'd out of it. You can run out of a grab with it, which is another big thing as well. And it's very responsive, feels really good. Uh, there's no vertical movement with it as well. And you can actually bunny hop out of it as well, much like you can with a Reinhardt Charge or a Mercy sort of Guiding Angel, where you can sort of hop along and just as you come out you can do a little bit of a jump so you can get some pretty good distance on it and as i said it's six seconds that you can move around pretty much wherever you want granted it's not a vertical heavy map and you could just do a lot i think she's very mobile and i think that's going to be the thing that separates um the pros from the noobs when it comes to picking up this hero is how effectively they uh mobile and move around and balance the damage and support that they can actually do um other than that it can be pretty difficult to sort of play along so let's talk about the ult, where I think there's a lot of details that are kind of going wrong with uh, how it works. Again, with damage numbers, we don't have exact ones from the sun bit when it comes to healing. She does twice as much healing as Mercy's uh, normal tethered uh, left click. Um, when it comes to damage, it's a little bit more than Winston, but I don't imagine it's by much. It's just very good at like tanking people down per second. Um, but it is really good in those situations where Valkyrie is really useful, where you can really push along with your team and sustain it and put out a little bit of damage and kill stuff whilst also protecting your team. The amount of healing that it does is pretty pretty intense, so uh, that's one of the main things. Um, apparently, it lasts for five seconds. I felt it lasted a lot longer. You move a lot quicker as you're doing it, and it can be interrupted. It's a channeled ultimate, much like Roadhog or High Noon with McCree or Farrah or Rocket Barrage. So, like, a decent flashbang or hook will instantly end your ultimate, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, I want to see that be nano boosted as well. I wonder how much that's going to do with damage and healing, but Christ, that might make Anna a little bit more viable when it comes to getting out some really intense healing by just Vitu Grenade, nano boosting Amira and Myra ulting everybody. That would be impressive to see, and I don't know what we'd call it. Probably like a Kamehameha, I suppose, would be the, the best name when it comes to stuff like Beyblade, but uh, we'll decide on names at some point. It also heals you when you do damage to people as well, which, I, again, is a nice balance between finding the damage and the healing sort of hybrid. Uh, but it's certainly more leaning towards being a healer than a DPS, but it's quite nice that you have something that I think made Anna and Xenia are really um, viable and you know enticing for a lot of people that you can have an impact in doing some damage and being awesome at playing this hero whilst also you know supporting your role and doing your job in a team by healing people and making sure that they stay alive. Now it's worth adding and this will be on PTR some point soon. These numbers that I've spoken about may be up for change and some of them may be flat out wrong. Again Blizzard are very quiet when it comes to keeping some of the stats and stuff. Um, but in terms of do I think she's high impact, do I think she's viable, 
Uh, she fits into a slot that I think Overwatch needs. It's another support hero that people have been going on about, so it kind of infuriates me to a point where um, people are like, we want a support hero at BlizzCon, we really need it for the game to survive, and people go, okay, here's a support hero that is pretty unique with how she works, and then people are like, no, nah, it's, it's not, not enough. I'm sorry. So it's um, it works really nicely. She feels really good to play. I don't think she feels really clunky at all. It's hard to say for certain just because we played like Sombra last year 6v6 and we couldn't really get a gauge of how good she was. Um, and it's kind of similar with Myra. She works well with some heroes. She gets countered by others. Um, but I really like how she plays. I think she fits into a nice niche of players like myself where I'm not mechanically that good to pick up people like Anna and Zen. But I have good enough game sense and knowledge of how to play it and how to know when to engage and disengage, when to play offensively and defensively, much like a lot of Lucio and maybe Mercy players. There's a nice sort of hybrid into getting good mechanical skill and game sense, but also just having the knowledge to make it work. So I think she's going to be picked up by a lot of players. I think a lot of players are going to gravitate to her fairly quickly. I understand how she looks and how she can look a little bit like Luster, but certainly playing her, I like how she feels. Uh, she's not Orisa, essentially. Um, she doesn't feel clunky. All of her abilities are very fluid into one another. But I'm going to answer a lot more questions. Um, if you do have any more questions that I haven't answered in this video, put them in the comments below. I'm going to put together like a big Q&A video as well whilst I'm out here at BlizzCon. So... Yeah, I just wanted to sort of give these stats on everything that I've noted down on this um, <laughs> Google Doc document of talking to one of the game testers. So there it all is, just sort of scrolling through it all. Um, she has 200 HP, no armor and stuff like that. So um, she's pretty, pretty low health, but mobile, very mobile. That's the one thing I want to highlight. She can move around like crazy and I like the balance between... You have to do a good amount of healing and to spot your team. You also need to take the plunge and be quite offensive with damage and stuff as well. And nothing's going to feel better than getting a play in a game as Myra where you use your orbs effectively, killing people, supporting your team, pulling out the ultimate. It feels very much like Doom, old Doomfist did where all of his abilities roll into one another and it feels really fluid and dynamic. So I hope that they keep it like that and they don't change too much about her because I think she feels really good. Um, and that's certainly a misconception that I wanted to... Uh, talk to you about because a lot of people are looking at it and going, uh, I, d I don't know. Uh, she seems all right. Um, aesthetic wise, I kind of agree that it's it's not as good as some other heroes have been in the past, but um, certainly looks and plays really well. But certainly she plays really well. But that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, take care. We'll see you next time.